This afternoon, we are meeting Tolik Winner. Tolik is a sculptor and artist with a very colourful and varied history. I think it's probably best, Tolik, if I ask you to introduce yourself and just give us a bit of your background. Well, my name is Tolik Winner. Um, I'm a sculptor, artist, and uh, I was born in the former USSR left Russia in 1974, and my parents immigrated to Israel um, in 74. I lived there for six years. Uh, my British-born wife, um, I met her in, on the kibbutz, and uh, we're here since 1980. So I've been here for 42 years. So we now know that you're a sculptor and an artist. I understand that you have done work of all shapes and sizes kind of what's the smallest and what's the biggest oh uh the smallest um probably about a couple of inches and the biggest probably about three meters 12 13 feet the 12 foot tall piece is that the one called People, Eternal Love? It actually stands at three metres because it's got uh, one and a half metre plinth. So it's one and a half metre piece. Uh, it's made of steel and I've had it there for, I think, 17 years. Um, the other installation, they're still trying to raise funds to fit it in Peterborough University. It's literally a square where people can sit and have their sandwiches and it's abstract human figures, um, 25 of them, it made of steel, and it's like chessboard, a shape of a chessboard. In fact, I've had an email today from a lady trying to raise funds to get this installed because it's been in storage for, I think, 10, 12, maybe 15 years. Uh, hopefully they'll raise the money and um, they'll be able to install it for, for the um, college students. And this is a... Peterborough Sculpture Park. Yes, it's a Peterborough Sculpture Trust at the entrance. It's it's literally a few meters away from Anthony Gormley's and Anthony Cairo's sculpture. What inspires your work? Um, first of all, my my life. First of all, first of all, because a lot of it is autobiographical. A second of all, humanity. Uh, what fascinates me is uh, philosophy, human condition, um, the universe, what is our purpose here, um, what are we doing, where we're going, and, and what is our past, basically. And that's what drives me, to tell a story. And that's what uh, sculpture, art is about, is you tell a story. And you can tell a story through sculpture, paintings, through music, through any form of art, even down to sports. It can be an art form. Are there any pieces that you've created that you would describe are as, as particularly focused on anti-Semitism? Yes, some of it, some of it, very much so. Yeah, uh, well, specifically the sculptures that I've, I've emailed you, um, that gives a definition of um, um, not just uh, the Holocaust, it's human genocides overall. Um, and obviously Holocaust, it's something is very personal because I've lost a lot of members of my family, uh, but uh, there isn't a Jewish family who hasn't lost, um, um, and especially my grandmother was left with four children at the age of 24, when she's lost her husband, shot down by a German plane, he was fighting for the Russian army. So she lost her, uh, not just her husband, in the same week she lost her brothers as well. So there isn't a family who hasn't lost. That pains me. And, and that's, uh, you know, and then it gives me uh, another reminder of other genocides like uh, Khmer Rouge, uh, uh, killing fields and many, many other genocides um, through human suffering and through human generations. And, um, 
And sometimes I ask myself, is he, is he worth saving humanity? I say, yes, I answer myself, yes, of course he is. Is worth saving every living creature on the planet because every single one of us have a purpose and every single one of us are born artists without exception. No matter who they are, first and foremost, we are born artists. We can all draw, we can all do things that connect it to art, but because without art, we've got no life, we've got no, no progress. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna put up a couple of shots that you sent me that are uh, actually of, of the one of the images that's behind you. And I'd like you to kind of just take us through what the image represents and, and a little bit about how it was made. Okay, so literally take us through what's this called um, and what does it mean and how did you make it? Wow, um, you chose a very complex piece because it took me literally um, almost a month to make. It's a life-size pear, as you can see. It's called Forbidden Fruit and uh, I've used four different materials. I've used bronze, copper, steel, and aluminium. I literally melted everything in one mold, mixed in the mouth. Then once I've got the actual solid bar, then from that solid bar, I used a water jet machine from my drawing. I cut out the shape of the pear. This is all one piece. This is no separation here. Everything was made from one solid piece. Use the water jet to, to cut out the form. Then I would take it to my engineer. He would literally spend days uh, polishing first uh, into form because when I take it from the water jet, it's a rough form. It's like a rough diamond, basically. It's a rough cut. So that rough cut becomes a smooth cut through a lot of perseverance. Sometimes my engineer used a lathe machine to, to basically um, to start it off because by hand to, to polish so much metal, it's a lot of work. And then once it got that form, then it repolishes again with different grades of sandpaper to perfection. In some cases, obviously like mirror polish, in this case is satin finish. And, 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 and that piece, obviously it's uh, very, very close to my heart. If you look beneath that piece, there is a broken down uh, Star of David um, that's um, signed by me. And you can see that was the form that I put into the mold before I poured the aluminium. So once the aluminium was poured into that shape, it was literally a long shape in, in the round mold. We poured the aluminium and once it was cut um, into that uh, cylindrical form, you have the projection of the star uh, right up to the to the top of the pair that gives you uh, that the star gets diluted and uh, disappears into a tip of the pair. And obviously a human skull going through the pair, uh, that doesn't just mean death, that means um, a life cycle, basically. And it's very close to to me, because it's a very personal piece of sculpture. Well, thank you so much. I mean, for, for sharing uh, what it all means. As ever, time is short. You obviously uh, had life-changing moments that you chose to be the focus for becoming an artist. Anyone else out there who's thinking, I'd really love to be an artist, but I don't know, or can I do it? Are there any reasons why I shouldn't? What would you say to those people? I say to them, just go ahead and do it. Make those mistakes. And if you haven't made mistakes, you haven't done nothing. So go and do it and you can do it. If I can do it, anybody can do it. I've lectured at UCL University to art students um, uh, to say, look at me, I can barely walk. Um, I can barely get out of bed but I can do my art because that's what keeps me alive. That's what gives me um, a reason to live and, uh, and to do something not just for me, to do for other people as well. So I can be an inspiration to other people 
um, to give them hope, to give them desire to live and carry on and not to give up. And uh, to me, that's important. And for my children and for my grandchildren, um, to, to me, it's important. Well, that is a fantastic message, Tolek. So on behalf of Together, um, thank you so much for agreeing to uh, talk with me today. And I wish you luck with everything that you're planning. Thank you very much, Robin. I really appreciate that. And, um, and best wishes to you and your family.